Hi folks, Giles Reeves here from Selig Audio and today we're going full mad scientist mode with the new players and the coloring EQ. Let's just jump right in. Well, to start with, I'm using a pad sound from Europa. The pad sound is the first preset in the pad folder, just so anybody who knows this will be in familiar territory. Now what I'm doing with it from here is kind of tricky. I'm using Love One's MIDI CV converter to take the signal from Europa, which is coming from this track in the sequencer. And I'm sending it over to another uh, stack of players here, which are controlling a coloring EQ, which is into a delay. So let me turn the delay off and then mute that channel and on the parallel channel is where I have the coloring EQ inserted. So we have a arpeggiator going here with 16th notes and an octave going up. Really simple for now, just let's get started with this. So one of the things we can do right away is we can transpose We can transpose the equalizer effect here. It's nice up a fifth too, especially if we mix it in with the original. Let's try some variations. Let's go up two octaves. And up and down. So those are all fun variations. Okay, now let's get a little bit, well, let me show you before we jump in any further, let me show you what's going on here. The coloring EQ is using one band and it's soloed so that we can hear just that band. So this is what the parallel channel sounds like. So because it's soloed, it's working more like a band pass filter. Here's what it sounds like not soloed. Now that sounds like what we were, uh, what we would get if I just put the coloring EQ on the regular path and didn't use a parallel channel. The only reason I went for the parallel channel is so I could add some delay to just the filtered part and then have the pad by itself like this. All right. So now we can do uh, focusing on the coloring EQ part. We can add saturation to this. Let me turn that off for a second. Now the problem with that for some people is going to be that it sounds a little bit crispy. So what I've done here is I've gone into the saturation patch, this, the saturation path and put a bandpass filter which just rolls off some of that top and bottom even and tracks the, the, the key changes too. So it makes it a little su more subtle, the distortion effect. So here's without it and with it. Now if you want no saturation, you just turn that off right there. Alright, that's that part of the setup. Now let's look at some fun uh, transpositional modulations that we can do. We're going to start with the Pulsar LFO and a square wave. First let me show you uh, what happens when I turn it on. So watch this display right here. I've got it set up to go 0 to 24. Now Normally an LFO does plus and minus and if I bypass this in fact you will see it goes minus 12 to plus 12. The reason I don't want to do minus 12 to plus 12 
is because when I go minus, I'm going to be below the frequencies that the pad is playing. So basically, if I don't do any transposition, the filter over here is going to be tracking the fundamental of the pad. If I were to go down an octave, I would be below the fundamental and there's nothing down there. So I wouldn't have any use to go into negative numbers. So all I've done here is offset the, uh, the, EQ, the, the waveform so that we get only positive values. Um, that's just one of the things you can do with Selig gain with the um, passing a CV through it instead of an audio signal through it. We can also mute it and we can also invert it. And that's about it for CV signals. So in this case, it works out really well. We set the level to 80% and we set the gain trim to plus 24 dB. Now I know that doesn't convert to CV, but the way I set this up is I just watch the values over here until it's where I want it to be. Now we can do one more fun thing, but let me just play you what this does first of all. So I have this changing three eighth notes rate. Let's, I find that an odd number works really well to kind of randomize things a little bit. There's also this three step waveform here that's pretty cool because it'll do an octave uh, or zero, 12 and 24 semitones, which is zero, one octave and two octaves. Sounds like this. Now let's do the um, take it up a fifth trick and that works on this patch because the Europa patch has a one of its engines is up a fifth. All right, so that's fun. There's still a few more tricks that we can do. One of the things that we can do that I've already preset here is I've taken pitch wheel and sent it to a CV out and then I'm taking that CV out going into the uh, sequencer control on the back of the coloring EQ. Additionally, I can turn on the gate function here and let me turn off this transpose for a second so we don't have that variable and set all my transposing to zero. Now what I want to do is turn on the velocity here. Now we have a way to control velocity. Now I've turned on the gate and I've turned velocity up all the way so that maximum velocity affects the um, EQ depth. So if a note has zero velocity, it's the same as putting the gain control at zero, no effect. When it's 127 velocity, it's going to equal where it is now, which is plus 12 dB. So 64 velocity would give us plus 6 dB and so forth. So now we can exclude notes. Let's just simplify this and turn this off so you can hear the obvious. Let's raise this up an octave. It's easier to hear. Now let's turn on velocity and we're only going to use the first and the last note. So the third of the chord in the middle is, is missing now. There's the third. Now we're just hearing just the third. Now we're hearing the first note, the bottom note softer than the middle note and the top note softer than the middle note. So now we can control the dynamics of this effect here. If you were playing it live we could have a, a soft chord for example play a subtle effect play it loudly and we bring in that effect. So We've got pitch bend too. Let's play with that a little bit. So if I go back here, I can, I need to set my pitch bend range to match. So this is two. I want it to be two here. Now 
Now if I increase my pitch bend range, for example, to 12, I need to set it to 12 here to match. Now we can have If I don't want velocity to affect it, I can just turn it off there. Well, I hope that that's given you some inspiration for ways to use the new player devices and CV together in creative ways to take things even farther than were possible before with reason. Now, go make some music.